Hey guys, what's up? Ian here from Met America Prep. Thanks for tuning in and watching. So, it's a beautiful day here in Kansas. It's currently around 80 degrees, overcast skies, but very humid. Uh, with the overcast skies, it's extremely bright out. My eyes aren't adjusting very well from being inside all night. Uh, but anyways, I'm out here doing another video on the camper, the small trailer, four bait trailer that I built last summer, or rebuilt last summer. I did a whole series of videos on it, and I've had several questions over the last um, four or five months on the videos themselves. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of update you as to what we've got going on, uh, what the plans are for the very, very near future, and uh, what I want to do with the camper here pretty pretty soon. All right, guys, so I had to come out to the country about three miles outside of town just to get this video done because it seemed like the vehicle traffic and the air traffic overhead was just increasing like crazy. And apparently my house is on the final approach for the day, even though it's normally not. Um, anyways. So the trailer, if you haven't seen the, the videos I did last year, I highly suggest you do, but a little, back, a little bit of background information on the trailer. It is a four by eight trailer. It's actually shy of four foot wide at 46 inches and shy of eight foot long at 92 inches, but we can still call it a four by eight trailer. Um, it is 10 foot overall long and four foot tall. Um, it is a true four foot tall. And then you have your rack and everything on top. It's five inches. Um, Anyways, the, the windows are RV takeout windows from a salvage yard. I paid 20 bucks for those, both of those. And then the door is a RV takeout luggage door um, from eBay. I don't know what they replaced them with or anything, but it, it worked and it, it's pretty sturdy. I have LED lighting all the way around. I have yellow running lights on the front and the sides. And then on the, the back uh, sides here, I have LED... Um, red LED lights and then of course LED tail lights. I'll go over here on the side and I'll show you what I've done recently. Within the last uh, couple of months I've built this homemade road shower. It is out of five foot of four inch PVC. It has a two inch reducer here to a 90 degree threaded elbow and then I have a, a little check valve. You can hear that little check valve there to relieve pressure so I can pressurize it with a hand pump or say air pump from a electric pump. Um, and then it comes over here to a straighter valve so I can pump it up and then a 90 degree valve right there. And I have another little uh, elbow here so I can put my uh, spray nozzle on there and I'll show you that in a minute. Coming down here I've got a group 24 to 31 battery box I have yet to get the battery um, purchased and the solar stuff set up, um, but it is a you know a, a box that can fit 24 to 31 group size batteries. Uh, I do plan on buying a group 24 battery, which will come to about right here on the box, and I'll have the rest of this for um, cables or uh, whatever else. And I will be um, a little bit lighter with a group 24 battery as opposed to a 31 battery. Uh, so that's around 60 to 70 pounds just on this right here, and it is welded onto the frame It's pretty sturdy. I built this in about five minutes. It's the little frame here is, is pretty well put together And then this last week and I also got a gearbox. It was like 40 bucks at Walmart Bolted to the frame and it'll hold everything I will need. I can even put my coolers there or I can put a, a my, my solar stuff in there if I wanted to whatever it want to be I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, of course, up here I have my homemade shore power. Well, it's just a little, you know, regular plug. I'm going to redo it actually. It's because it's I pulled it out the other day on accident. But it's just hooked up to a an outlet inside, and that will give me power at say a campsite that is actually, um, you know, prepared for trailers and whatnot and then I have two and a half inch LED lights on both sides just for the nighttime and I can turn them on and and shine off into the ditches and everything or if I'm at a campsite I can use them they've came in actually pretty handy I'm going to be getting a hundred watt solar panel right now I have a 10 watt solar panel to put on top but I'm gonna get a hundred watt solar panel and put it right directly on the the roof of the trailer and then run everything down to the battery box. Run it all into the battery box, 
charge it up and then actually have a two prong or a two pin outlet or inlet either on this side or right in this vicinity so I can run cables from the battery into the inside and on the inside I will have a little little wall piece here with a inverter and and chargers and all that kind of stuff all right so on the rear I have also the um, jack stands that are welded on and folded up to the rear um, I do have 15 by 8 rims for this trailer and I want some kind of off-road tire um, similar to the BFG KO2s the problem is they, they don't make any just normal I don't know what the, the nominal size or whatever for the 15s are uh, but they do make 31 10 fives for the 15s which is actually gonna be too big and too wide for the fenders and everything and so I have to make a decision I'm gonna go with the 15 by or the 15 by 8 but the problem is they're too wide for this so I may have to stick with these tires right here or these rims and go with a bigger off-road style tire right now they are 195 75 14s um, which are great for the road and everything but we have intentions of going to the mountains and stuff and climbing over rocks or whatever with a solid axle if I can show you this here you may be able to just barely see it with a solid axle it's not going to be very safe especially with it sitting this low um, it sits low enough that my Jeep which has a 2 inch uh, body lift and then um, 265 70s on it it I had to have a five and a quarter inch drop for this trailer to sit on my uh, Jeep. And I'd rather just lift this up and have a two inch drop or a straight out um, drop hitch. That way I didn't have to worry about the height. Now, another reason why I need to get raised up, if you can see this here, I am now level. If you can see my jack, it's not all the way up right now because I'm not over any terrain um, but I raised it up all the way the other day and I actually managed to smack a rock just right and I bent the crap out of the jack and so I'm gonna get one of the adjustable jacks that go all the way up into there it's much taller but it'll be adjustable and it'll help me clear the the rocks and the and the debris and stuff in the roads in Colorado so let's go ahead and get inside and I will show you what it looks like right now and what I plan to do with it in the future All right, so we're in the trailer right now. It's pretty, it, it's small. It, of course, it's four foot by eight foot, or shy of. Um, but you can put a, a twin mattress in here with a little bit of room on the side for your shoes and stuff. Um, the twin mattress will come in about right here on the door, and then you have the rest of this area for you know, some, some bags or whatever it be. It's not a whole lot of room, um, but it's a small trailer, and that's the whole point of it. It's just to be able to get in the tight places and, and feel comfortable enough to have some coverage over your head and to go from there. Um, of course, the man door here is nice and, and tidy. It's small, it's nice, it works. Um, it could be better, it could be bigger, but I'm not worried about it as of the way it looks right now. Um, over here, which you can't probably see, I got switches. Um, one switch is for the LED lights, the main power on there for the trailer, and then the other one is for my courtesy light. This used to be all 12 volt lighting in here, but my lighting from my that I had set up the wiring and everything was not working appropriately for some reason and it was a bad ground somewhere and for some reason it just wanted to short out every time I did it I tried to rewire it tried to redo it and everything but it was fighting the ground from the Jeep and so I figured until I get a solar power a solar panel set up uh, made up I'll just do with these little pod um, LED lights they are uh, with three uh, AA batteries and they're nice and they're and they're cheap but they, they look pretty well they're like a, a brushed stainless steel it looks good works well and it's pretty cost efficient um, the windows of course open up just fine the only downfall to this is there's no screen and so if we want to go ahead and put some you know have these windows open in a you know next to a river or whatever there's going to be the, the possibility of mosquitoes all night, so I'll have to get some screens for that. I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'll show you the rest of this in a second. In each corner, I have um, these coat hooks, you know, for, well, for clothes and whatnot. 
They, they work pretty well, fire extinguisher up here. I also have a gun rack, or a sportsman's rack, they call them now, um, a gun rack uh, for if I'm you know deer season. I can put my gun up here and not have to worry about going to the car and back and forth. I can put fishing poles up here. I can put kayak paddles up here, which is what we're gonna be doing when we head to Colorado here in a couple of weeks. And then of course, more clothes hanging right there. Um, and then my roof vent, which I wish, I wish it was an electric fan up there to move some air because it is warm in here right now. It's 85 degrees out here in Kansas and it's just uh, very muggy in here. Over here, I have my 110 outlet, the shore power line that I made up from the outside, which I'm gonna redo. Um, it works, it does well, um, but it's only for established campsites, of course. Up here real quick, a little flip up cup holder. It's kind of nice. Be able to put your cup there and not knock it over in the middle of the night. Um, over here, I'm going to be putting that solar panel uh, set up here. So I'll, I'm going to make a board to put my um, inverter on and the charge controller and the little meter and everything and all the switches and everything I want right here because I only have half inch plywood here so I can't really screw through a whole lot so I'm just going to put some bolts through, tie it down to it and go out with the bay. Of course, a little, once I get insurance from the trailer, I'm going to put it all in here and information and whatnot in the little baggie, little pencil bag screwed into the wall. And then this is my pump for the road shower, which I'll show you that right now. Alright guys, so I have pumped the uh, shower up with the Schrader valve. Now keep in mind, I think I did a video on this, I haven't posted it to the YouTube yet. Um, but anyways, this is uh, not regular, just PVC, it's cellular, it's cellular core, so it's foam, and so it can't hold a lot of pressure, it's like, you know, 10 PSI. Um, but anyways, it's it's powered up. I've got a, a handheld, little like a, a sink faucet thing here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Got pressure. And then instant hot water. Look at that. And right there you've got instant hot water for however long you want it. Well, not really however long you want it. It's just three gallons. But it definitely works pretty well. So, anyways, I'll go ahead and finish this video up real quick and uh, get, get it over with. Well, that was significantly awkward, guys. So I was trying to wrap up the video and I had... I went to a cemetery about three miles outside of town. It was a small Catholic cemetery, about a half acre big. And I've been to this cemetery several times to shoot videos. And I was there and I figured since it's like a low traffic road, no foot traffic, no air traffic, I was gonna be quiet and not gonna be bothering anybody. And nobody's gonna be bothering me. And then all of a sudden, two dudes show up the last like 10 or 15 minutes of me shooting. And I'm like, well, this is significantly awkward. Um, I'm trying to finish up my video and they're just they're staring at me and it turned out to be two dudes that were uh, There to mow the grass, which is all cool um, Richard and Jim they were pretty interested in the trailer and they didn't want to interrupt me making my video Which I appreciated that um, but it didn't make me any less awkward and them watching me do so so um, I gave my information they looked at the looked at the, looked at the uh, Trailer checked out the shower and all that kind of stuff. So they're they're pretty cool guys 
but it, it just makes for awkward times. I'm not one of those social, social, social YouTubers. You know, they're just, you know, I can't get over that whole people watching me shoot video type thing. Um, especially if it's just myself. If there are others there, I don't mind, but otherwise. Um, oh, a couple of things that I, I needed to answer in your, in the questions. I'm going to do it in this video too at the end here. Um, how much does the trailer weigh? Well, I have actually failed to weigh the trailer. Um, I, I wanted to without the roof rack on it and everything and, and all the accessory stuff. But I did, after I built the roof rack, I did weigh it. And I got the tongue, well I didn't weigh the whole trailer, but I got the tongue weight. And when I did the tongue weight, I about crapped myself. Um, the tongue weight is nine pounds. So you multiply that by four, I think, is that right? So that's 36 pounds for tongue weight. Um, now the, the big, big problem with that is that rack puts a little bit of the weight behind the axle. Um, and so that makes the issue right there being that it's gonna be tongue light and it's gonna travel some more. So that's why I put the, the gearbox in the front and I plan on putting a uh, jack and all that kind of stuff to weigh it down some in the forward position of the trailer. And the other questions I've got um, were, what would I do different if I or, or, or to redo this? Which I actually am looking for a new trailer. I'm going to be doing some more of these. I think I want to try, try to start making them to sell. Um, but I would not do the fiberglass resin with the top side paint. I would do some. I would do some kind of sheet metal. I would do something else because um, right now the the fiberglass resin is in fact cracking, it's drying with this nasty uh, Kansas heat, you know, the middle of the day heat. It is drying and cracking and the top side paint should be a little bit more flexible, but it is cracking light right along with it. So I'm gonna have to be repairing that again, which I did repair it this fall, or this spring, sorry, about March um, and it looked great. It was, it was smooth and it just seems like the wood is drying out or maybe it got some moisture in it. I don't know where or why it got moisture in it, but it is definitely um, drying out and cracking and does not look good. Plus, I'm going to be putting a window. There's a trailer. I'm going to be putting a small like 9 by 30 window right there in the, on the angled piece. So that will help me get some more natural light inside the trailer. So. I don't know. But anyways, that is the trailer update, and I appreciate you guys watching me blabber and everything. Hope you all are having a great day. It's a beautiful day here in Kansas, currently 90 degrees, though, and nice and humid. So, anyways, keep coming, carry on. See you later. Be safe.